This video is going to be dealing with midpoints. We've already covered some different examples of how to find the midpoint of a line segment or the midpoint or the middle point between two existing points. This particular problem uh, gives an interesting twist to that. It's a problem that I struggled with when I was in high school and I wanted to put an example in your flipbook to, to hopefully help most of you, if not all of you, understand how to solve this type of midpoint problem. And before we get started, go ahead and uh, turn in your flipbooks to section number two, the midpoint section. This section we're going to be filling out is in the bottom flap on the right hand side. And please title this section as missing endpoint. Missing endpoint. Let's read the question. Segment AB has an endpoint at A of negative 3 comma negative 2 and a midpoint at M with a coordinate 3 comma 4 and what are the coordinates of endpoint B? So you can see this is different from our previous problems. In all of our previous problems we were given the endpoints A and B or C and D or whatever the letters were for those endpoints and you were asked to use the midpoint formula to find the midpoint of that segment. But in this case, we're given one endpoint and we're given the midpoint, and they're asking us to find the coordinate of the other endpoint. Let's have you write a few things down, then I'll draw some diagrams and we'll try to break this down and solve this problem. First thing I want you to do uh, here is I want to reveal the this spot right here. Just go ahead and write down the midpoint formula again so you can recall that. The midpoint is found by taking the value, the two x values of the endpoints and multiplying, sorry, adding them together and dividing by two, comma, that's going to be the x value of the midpoint, and then we take the two y values of the endpoints, add them together, divide by two, and that gives you the y value of the midpoint. But now we're going to use this formula a little bit different. Go ahead and write down in this first column in your flipbook, x sub m is equal to x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2. And then the other column, write down y sub m is equal to y sub 1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2. If you need to pause the video for a moment to get those written down, go ahead and do that. I will continue now. Now, take a look at our midpoint formula, and remember, in the past, we've taken our endpoints, we've labeled them. So in this case, endpoint A, I can label this as X and Y, and I'm going to give it a sub-designation so we can tell it apart from the X and Y values of the midpoint. So I'm going to use X sub 1 and Y sub 1. And now for the midpoint, Let's label this as x, and we're going to use the letter m to designate the x value of the midpoint, and y sub m to designate the y value of the midpoint. So notice, we know x sub 1 in our formula, we know y sub 1, we know the x value and the y value of the midpoint. What we don't know is x sub 2 and y sub 2. Those are the coordinates of the B endpoint, or the endpoint labeled B. If you want to quickly show this on a graph just to see how this looks, really what they're telling us is if we have a coordinate grid over here, they're telling us, and I'm not going to use these exact values, but just look at this as an example. If, if we knew, let's go back to blue there, if we knew some point A on our graph and then they told us, hey, you know what, the midpoint of this segment is right here, then what you're being asked to do is figure out where is this value of B? Where is this other endpoint on this line segment? So instead of showing us A and B and asking for M, they're giving us A and M and asking us to find B. And we can still use this formula for that. Let's see how that works. Well, we know we know that this part of the formula right here, let me color this in purple, this part of the formula right here, this gives us the x value of the midpoint. 
And this part of the formula right here, this gives us the y value of the midpoint. So we can actually divide this midpoint formula into two separate formulas. The x value of the midpoint is equal to x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2. The y value of the midpoint is equal to y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2. And when we break it down this way, we should be able to actually solve for the x value of endpoint b and the y value of endpoint, endpoint b. Let's plug in the things that we know. We know that x sub m is 3. So that's going to be our number right here. 3 is equal to, we know that the x value of a is negative 3. We don't know what x sub 2 is. And we know that whole thing is going to be divided by 2. Same thing over here. We know that y sub m is equal to 4. We know that y sub 1 is equal to negative 2. What we don't know is y sub 2. And we know this whole thing has to be divided by 2. That's what our midpoint formula tells us. Well, now we have to solve these. Let's solve the left, left column first. Mathematically, we know that if this is a fraction with 2 in the denominator, the way I get rid of the 2 is I multiply both sides by 2. This is the denominator. I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal, or 2 over 1. And when we do that, class, you can remember this from previous math classes, these two fractions multiply together. We can cancel like terms if they're on top and bottom. That means this 2, I'll draw that a little better so you see this. This 2 cancels, and this 2 cancels. And if we multiply this side by 2 over 1, we're going to have to multiply the other side of the equation by 2 over 1 as well. Because you have to keep your equation balanced. And let's multiply this out. 2 times 3 is 6. The 1 on the bottom doesn't do anything, so we end up with 6 on this side. And since these 2's cancel and the 1 in the denominator does nothing, we end up with 6 equals negative 3 plus x sub 2. And now we can use our regular algebra skills, algebra 1 skills. I want to get x sub 2 by itself. How do we get rid of a negative 3? I add the opposite. So I add 3 to both sides. And I end up with, final answer, 6 plus 3 is 9. The negative 3 and the positive 3 cancel out. And I end up with 9 equals x sub 2. That's done. This means the x value of our endpoint b in our example is 9. Let's use the same math procedure to solve this side. Remember, we want to get rid of this fraction. So we multiply by the reciprocal. 2 is in the denominator. We'll put it in the numerator. Whatever we do to that side, we have to also do to this side. And for those of you who have struggled with fractions, just plug this in your calculator. Parentheses, 2 divided by 1, close parentheses, times 4. And that's going to give you 8. And we remember that the reason we did this is because the 2 in the numerator cancels with the 2 in the denominator, and we end up with 8 equals negative 2 plus y sub 2. Again, using our Algebra 1 skills, we want to get this negative 2 to go away, so we add the opposite. The opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do the exact same thing to the other. And we end up with 8 plus 2 is 10. The negative 2 and the positive 2 cancel each other out because that turns to 0. And we end up with 10 equals y sub 2, or y sub 2 equals 10. So now we know the coordinates of endpoint B. The x value is 9, the y value is 10. So in our final answer, we can write the coordinates... I'll put the coordinate of 
point B is 9 comma 10. And we have now solved the missing endpoint of this particular problem.